Hello, and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name's Frank, and I'm glad that you're here. In this video, I'm going to address some comments that I've gotten on some previous videos, as well as some questions that I've gotten from faculty members at the institution where I work. And that is, how do I take a poll in Microsoft Teams? Now, I've done a previous video where I showed you how to do that using Microsoft Forms, but there's another application that a lot of people like, and I like quite a lot myself, called Poly. So I'm going to show you how to install and get Poly up and running in your Teams environment, and then I'm going to show you how to use Poly in order to take a quick survey in the discussion area or in a team meeting that you might be having. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe, comment down below. I'd like to respond back and welcome you to the channel. I'm getting subscribers and I don't necessarily always know who those subscribers are. So if you comment down below, I can say hello and welcome you because it's always nice to welcome people to the class. Let's go have a look at Polly and how we can create a survey in Microsoft Teams. Here we are in Teams and I've got two instances of Teams running side by side. This one over here is me, the instructor. So I've got Frank here as the instructor. And on the other side here, I'm logged in as a student, Clark Kent. And we're both in the Justice League classroom. And let's just both hop over to meeting room number two. So we're now sitting both in meeting room number two. And if I was to say something to Clark, if I said, you know, hello, Clark, over here, you would see that that message pops up. And if Clark was to come in and hit the reply button, so he wants to hit reply here, and he says, hello, Frank, you can see that we're communicating with each other. And this could be individuals, this could be the whole class, this could be a subset that's sitting in this meeting room. And now let's say I want to do a survey, I want to do a quick poll in this, in this chat here. Well, to do that, I could use the forms, and I did that in, in a previous video, I already talked about that, but... I'm going to use an app called Polly. Now to get the, that app called Polly, I'm going to go down here to the apps and I can do a little search in here for Polly. And there, there's Polly right there, a little parrot, right? And so I, if I click on Polly, you're going to notice that my option here is open. And that's because I've already installed Polly into this environment because I use it all the time. If I hadn't installed all uh, um, Polly, let's go into the, just some random app here. I've, I have not installed Alley. And if I go in here, you'll notice that the option is to add it. So in my case, when I go into Poly, it's already there, so I can open it. I would never really open an app from searching it through the App Store. What I'm going to go here is go back to my Teams, and I'm going to be back in meeting room number two. And I'm going to go into the ellipse here, and in the ellipse here, I'll see all of the apps that I've already installed into my environment, and you can see Poly is one of the apps I've already installed. So if I invoke that app by going into the ellipse and into Poly here, then I'm going to be able to set a little poll in there. Alternatively, down below here, I have an action bar. And if I go along here, you'll see there's the ellipse here. And if I go into the ellipse here, there's Poly there as well. So I can launch it through this ellipse. I can launch it through this ellipse. And in fact, if I launch it here, so I'll just launch it here, and this will go in and allow me to create a little poll. So I can go in here, I have to sign in with my Microsoft account, and I'll do that in just a moment. But what I want to show you here is that if I use that app a fairly frequent amount, it'll actually show up in the front part of this, this bar. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to go into Poly, and I'm going to sign in with my Microsoft account. So I'll just sign in with my Microsoft account. It's going to authenticate. And now I have this poll here. So I'm going to create a new poll. And I'm going to just quickly make it a little poll or a little survey. So if I go in here, notice right now I'm on the free plan. I can actually go into more functionality on a trial basis. And if it's valuable to me, then I can sign up and pay, pay a subscription fee. I'm just going to do a simple one in here. So I'm going to go in here. My audience is the meeting room. Notice that I can make the audience. Um, I can change the audience if I... Um, in that case there, I haven't done a lot with that. I'm in the meeting room, so that's going to be my audience, but you can uh, modify that if you go in there so you can send different channels to, to that. Some of the features here will not be available to me because I'm not using either a trial version or the paid for version. I'm currently using the free plan on the current on the current user that I'm logged in as. So in this case here, you could make it maybe a reoccurring poll. 
So this could be something where, you know, every morning as a way of creating sort of a social environment, you might want to say, how's everybody doing today? Or, you know, tell me one good thing that happened to you uh, yesterday. What did you learn yesterday? You know, name one good thing and maybe give a little list of five subjects that you covered and say, what was the most interesting uh, thing that we talked about yesterday? And maybe you have five objectives that you're looking for in your class and then you can sort of go in there. Um, so I'm going to go, I can send the poll now or I can schedule the poll. This is a pretty powerful feature as well. You can put a reminder to yourself that the poll is going to be active. I can go in and create a multiple choice uh, poll, an open-ended one where they can just type, type in text, a multiple choice where they can put several selections in there, or a rating. So ratings are really good for that health check on a scale of one to five. And you'll see that when we record meetings in Microsoft, we get a little poll at the end that says, how was the call? So I'm just going to go in here and my question in here is going to be, have you subscribed to this channel, right? Because I'm always, always working the YouTube angle and the answer is yes. And the answer is no, but I just did. Okay. So those are your only choices. You're either subscribed or you just click the subscribe button. That's all I want to do. Uh, so we go in there. You can now, again, add choices. So you can have a, a longer list. There's no other choice here. You subscribe or you subscribe. Okay. And we go in here. It's pretty heavy handed here. So we'll say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the analytics of this video and I'm going to see just how many subscribers I get from this video. And if I don't get a lot, then this poll is horrible and you should never use this again. Anyways, I'm joking around. So if Okay, so there's lots we can add to the poll. We can go in and, and choose, uh, you know, whether the audience can add choices. So that's always a thing where you may want to pre-populate a poll and you might want to say, okay, what did you do last night? But you want to allow people to put in their own options in there as well. So they can add choices or you might say, what would you like me to review this morning? And you have three choices and you allow them to say, oh, there's something I'd like you to review that's not on that list. They can add their own choices. There's a lot in this particular polling tool. I, it's really cool. It's really useful. So I'm going to go in there and then you can have comments on or off, you know, on or off. You can share thoughts about the poll or you can turn that off. And then the results are available after the poll closes. So you can wait till everybody fills it in and then show the results. Or you can have live results as they come in. I often like to show the results after I close the poll because... A lot of times if somebody quickly answers the question, so if you have a poll that says, uh, would you like me to review this particular topic or which topic would you like me to review? Somebody might feel intimidated if 10 people in the class have chosen topic A and they really want you to do topic B. So they might choose topic A even though in their heart of hearts, they really want topic B. So just bear that in mind. Um, whether it's anonymous or non-anonymous, this is very powerful. Whether you want to know who gave you the answers or whether you want to say, look, I'm asking you something and I, I don't want the public to know how you feel. Like, are you, you know, if you give some sort of uh, lecture and you want people to be able to answer honestly, you might want to say, I want that to be anonymous because sometimes people are intimidated to say, you know what, my, my understanding of that topic is really three out of five and everybody else is five out of five, and then they start feeling bad about themselves. But this way, if it's anonymous, first of all, nobody knows who the three out of five people were, and um, and it's also more honest. People sometimes are anonymous. But however, in some polls, you want people to take ownership for their answers, right? So a lot of stuff there. So a lot of options in there. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to preview that poll. So it'll show me the poll, and I say, yes, I subscribed, of course, and I submit my vote. So this just gives me an idea of what the poll is. And now I can just send that poll into the environment. And because I schedule, I didn't schedule it, I said, you know, fire the poll off right now. So I've pushed that poll in and a new message is in there, right? And it's actually gone right there. There we have it. So you can see, have you subscribed to the channel? Now Clark is going to go in here and he's going to see that he's got this, this poll that he needs to fill out. So he's going to say, yes, he did. Cause you know, Clark is Superman and Superman's definitely goes in there and he's going to submit his vote. And then what I'm going to see is I'm going to see no votes. And then as soon as they submit the vote here, boom, it came in. So somebody said yes, and I'm going to say yes to it. So I can also participate in there and you'll see that that vote gets submitted. And I can now see that two people have said yes. And Clark can now see over here that two people have said yes. So there you have it. That's a very quick way of very quickly putting a poll in there. But you want to know an even quicker way? We can get to that 
application, instead of going to the ellipse and going into poly, I can just use the at poly. And if I do at poly, boom, that's how you can launch it. And I can create a poll right here, right? An advanced poll, or I can go in and just put questions one and two. So let's have a look at this. So if I go into at poly and I go, how are you today? And I'll give them two options, great and super. So that's just a very quick poll where I use the at symbol. I fire that off and look at this. So I go, Polly, how are you today? Great, super. And it generates that poll. And Clark Kent, well, Clark Kent is Superman, so he's obviously super. And he'll submit that vote. And I'm just feeling great. And I'll submit my vote. And we both see the results of the vote. Well, I couldn't resist. I clicked the button that said start your free trial. And so now I'm on a 14 day free trial of Polly. Um, it is uh, $19 a month if you buy a year, 23 a month if you go month to month. Not sure if I'm gonna be able to stick with that or use my professional development funds for that. My use of it will be somewhat limited, but uh, at this point, because I'm not teaching again until January. But that being said, um, maybe my organization has a subscription, but I wanna do the free trial because there is some functionality in there that the, the standard version has. You can have more participants in your survey. And when you go in here, so it's the same sort of look, but I can grab templates. So if I go in, I can select some really interesting templates here for Polly that will give me some, you know, suggestion box template, team happiness pulse survey. So there's a number of global templates in there. Uh, if I go in, I can create a survey. So I can create a survey that's sent out to my team here. I can choose when to, to fire off that survey. Um, and I can go in and I can, uh, I can uh, do things like download the, the results of the surveys and such. So I haven't, I just clicked the button that said start free trial, but those are some interesting features that I'm gonna explore. Getting feedback and understanding how our students are thinking about certain topics is always important. In a classroom environment, we can always do that face to face. We can read body language. So surveys provide a great way to put that into a remote learning environment so that we can still interact and get a sense of where things are going with the students. I hope this video was useful. If it was, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed and commented down below already, go ahead and do that right now and we'll see you in the next video. Here are some other videos of mine that you can watch. I hope you find them interesting.